today we bring you Spiro. Now Spiro is an electric vehicle manufacturer and they manufacture these bikes right here. You see this is Commando. Commando is the brand name and Spiro is the company. So they have different varieties but you will notice that here where you see this sign here, the Spiro logo, that's where the battery is. For this particular bike that we are looking at, it has a hub motor here and you see it has disc brakes and that gives it an extra safety rating. Now when you look at this bike just here in front you'll notice this display here this display is ip68 water resistant rated you know i noticed something when i got close to it it turned black let me first see again oh okay this is a new feature this is a new feature because i didn't know when you get close it turns <laughs> turns dark but that's cool that is cool this light here is always on because this is an electric motorcycle. It does not make any sound. So that light is on for safety. They have replaced the aspect of light, of sound with the light. So that the passengers, the pedestrians, everyone on the road can see you coming from a distance. Now this motorcycle, the business model they are going with is you buy the motorcycle, but they retain ownership of the battery. And you can go through the many battery swap stations in Uganda to be able to switch up your batteries and get fully charged batteries. Now let's get someone from Spiro to talk, out, talk to us. Do you want to take control of your mobility? Do you want to be a part of the Green Revolution? Spiro Uganda is that partner that is here today to help you get there. What we're bringing into the market is a tried and tested mobility solution, an electric bike. What we have today is a range of bikes uh, ranging from three kilowatts all the way up to five or six kilowatts. Uh, we have 11,000 bikes in Africa today, which technically makes us Africa's largest player in that space. This product will get on a single charge. You will be uh, able to go up to 90, 100 kilometers. Right. For Uganda, in Ugandan context, yes. that's like from where to where? Uh, you will you would be able to go to Entebbe from Kampala and back. This is for the three kilowatt version? For any. Any of them? Yes. Okay, without on a single charge, you can do that distance? That is correct stuff. So what we're looking at is uh, rolling out 140,000 bikes in a period of five years. 140,000 bikes? In a period of five in years. five years. Yes. I want you to answer for me one question. Right. Is this bike intended for border border riders or individual use? It is intended. This is the border border of tomorrow. It's the border border of tomorrow. You're looking at but it. But I can also buy it for personal use. Yes, you can buy it for personal use. So you say the batteries will remain owned by Spiro. That is correct. When I'm a rider of this bike, yeah. where will I get the charge? Can I charge from home or I have to come to you for swap the batteries? Right. That's a good question. So we've got 30 swap stations in Kampala right now. 30? 30, 30. Okay. And uh, by the time we launch in January, we'll have 50. That number is going to grow. In the period of five years, we'll have 3,000. That number would be even greater than that because we have a franchising model that we will engage to help us cover even more ground. So that brings accessibility to the charging stations even closer to where you live, right? So what we have here is a three kilowatt bike. And the difference with this is that it's powered by a hub motor. The motor is situated in the hub. That's a big round thing Yes. in the back. This is a chain drive. Oh, I see this one has no hub motor. Yeah. This one has a chain drive. Yes. You see the chain right here? Yes. So the motor has been moved midship. So the motor has moved, has been moved here in the center. Yes. Is it this one here? That is correct. Okay. Yeah. And then you have a chain drive. Yes. Yes. Just to get it, to get it clearly. Yeah. I can choose to buy one that looks like this. Yes. When it is three kilowatts. Right. But I can also choose to buy one that looks exactly like this when uh, it is six kilowatts. This is okay. Just to be clear, this is for display purposes. Yes. But what you will see in the market when we launch in January will be more of this one. Oh, okay. Yes, so this the, is what we should expect to see. Yes, for the Ugandan market. Okay. Uh, maybe the seat will not look like that. We'll have more of the flatter seat. Yes. For because... more carrying capacity and the carrier. Yes. Yes. 
is it possible for you to test one for us? I want to see the wheel rolling. Yeah, yeah, sure. So that our viewers can see that these bikes actually run. Leja Leja, charge your ride. In a world choking on pollution, it is time to take charge. At Leja Leja, we are leading the way in Uganda. We supply and install top-notch EV chargers. Fast, reliable and eco-friendly solutions. Make the switch to a cleaner, brighter future today. Contact Leja Leja today. Okay, so with a key like that, uh -huh. so I'll turn on the key, power it on. Okay. okay. I had a sound right there. Was that sound from a speaker? Yeah, that's a speaker. We are keeping that sound to remind you where you're coming from. <laughs> uh, you may not have had that sound. Let's do it again. All right. Okay, so that sound comes from the speaker to alert you that the bike has been switched on. To, I mean, you could turn it on or switch it off, switch off that sound, but yeah. we keep it there as a nostalgia, I would uh, say, to remind you that, okay, you move, you've gone electric, but you've gone silent, you know? Yes, yes. So, uh, so now the bike is on. Okay. This is the park. Okay. Right? And the reason for that is like a safety feature to ensure that you know uh, if you inadvertently turn the throttle, the bike will not move. Right? Okay. Yes. So what activates the park is one of two things. It could be the side stand, right? Okay. Uh, we have two stands. We have the main stand and the side stand. I so see. right now the side stand is on. But if I kicked it off, uh, usually, so when you kick it off, you see the P disappears? Yes. Right? It's going to gear number three now. It's going to gear number three. So right now the bike is active. Yes. Mm. Yes. So all you have to do is, and the wheel rotates. <laughs> it's so silent; you can barely hear anything. Yeah. It's just a very tiny whine from the motor, and you can totally not hear it if you're in a noisy place or on our streets of Kampala. Yeah. It has gone oh all the way to sixty in a very short time like this. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I noticed something with the screen. Yes. When I came near, it turned dark. Yeah. When I went further, it became bright yeah. and white. So this is a, it's an adaptive screen. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in sunny conditions, it will be uh, full white. Yes. Just so that you're able to see what's being displayed on the screen. Uh, your speed, your battery charge level, the distance covered, and the distance that you can't cover with the current charge. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that is during bright conditions, like midday during the day right yes when it gets dark ambient light will make it switch so you notice it's a bit cloudy today so that's why it switched and went to the dark mode oh so, so it, it adapts it to make adapts. it easy exactly. for the rider to see the information that's very important right there that is correct a small question yes. so this is where the fuel is usually put for the petrol bikes yes I would like to know what is in here in this case. Is yeah. That, so yeah. So we've kept the shape for reasons that uh, we've grown up knowing that this is what a bike looks like, a motorbike, right? It has a particular shape. So if we said we're going electric and deleted this bulbous part, that would be a little weird, you know? It, you'd say that okay, that's a bike, but I don't understand the shape. So we've kept this in observance to the heritage of the motorcycle yes uh, but to keep not, it looking like a motorcycle, like a motorcycle yes. but it's not a petrol tank okay right? so we've kept it and repurposed it for storage oh wow yeah so that's your storage and it right has there. a usb charger right here usb exactly, port exactly. so i can charge my phone in there that is correct this would be perfect for the border border riders mostly yes. those that use right share apps yeah yeah they can easily charge on their bikes oh yes so you could keep your stuff in here and yes. uh, not worry that it would get stolen or maybe wet yeah. in the rain or stuff like that so let me get you right yes you're saying it is cheaper to run this bike than a petrol bike way cheaper if you bought a petrol bike today let's say 5.5 million and bought this at let's say hypothetically speaking six or seven million so you spend more let's say you spent more with this bike if we came back here 12 months later and presented a report showing how much we've both spent, 
you with the petrol bike would have outspent me by far. Why? Because you will be doing servicing for the bike, oil change, spark plug change. No need for service, cable. yeah, nothing like oil. The only things you'll be, the only consumables that you would be changing every now and then would be, you know, of course the battery. Just swapping the battery. And then the brake pads and maybe the tires once in a while. But these and are tubeless tires, so... Yes. In, on, on the issue of the tubeless tires, yes. tell us, why did you decide to go with the tubeless tires instead of the tires with tubes that we see on every yeah. other motorbike? This is, this is from, uh, from experience. Look, you've sat on a border border and uh, all of a sudden it deflects because he stepped on a nail or a sharp object, right? Yes. Yes. But it's well known that with a tubeless tire, you're going to step on a nail but will continue riding up to where you can get help. So this will keep you moving until you get help yes. to fix the, the puncture. Yes. Now we are at GoGo -Go Electric. GoGo -Go Electric brings these bikes to Uganda. And this is called the EV150. This bike you see here is beautiful. When you look at it, the red color is just mwah. Now I'm going to show you some things about this bike that I think are really special. First of all, it is an economy bike. This bike can do 120 kilometers. That's like moving from Kampala to Jinja on a single charge. And you would wonder how much would that cost? For every battery percentage, they charge you only 100 shillings. So this bike, a full charge would cost you only 10,000 shillings. And that 10,000 shillings will take you from Kampala to Jinja. It has been designed and it looks like a normal bike, but there is a difference. This is electric. We have our motor here, and the motor drives a chain that comes back here and gives you the propulsion. They have given it gears so that you are able to change the gears on different terrains, on hills, on flat areas, and flat, flat spaces. So I'm going to show you at the back here, and this is how it looks at the back. I think you can agree with me that it's beautiful. It looks just like a Bajaj Boxer with its, its long seat, so it can easily sit a customer, but it would be perfect for personal drives and also normal transportation for the border borders. Oh, uh, so yay, perfect. There's one here. They have already thought about it. <laughs> so I think you can see that that is USB type A right here. And you can plug in your phone and charge. This is an excellent bike. I love it. My brother, wait. <laughs> switch on when we are seeing. Let's start the process afresh. So you switch on. When you switch on the key, this is how the dashboard looks. And then all you have to do is race and change the gear. It has been in neutral, right? Now you put in a gear. So all you have to do is to accelerate and the bike will move. It's extremely quiet. You cannot hear a thing. You cannot hear a thing and the bike moves perfectly. I like it. Go, go. Innovative, sustainable, electric. Let's go.